the participant. This is group of igniting power engineers where the motive and objective is to disseminate the knowledge. We have some dream and it is very well said all dreams and ambitions are always move hand in hand and we have started a journey towards that goal and every journey has start with a single step and we have created that step and no journey is possible without grace and blessings of good solvers and good people like Vai Saab, Atki Saab, Kundu Saab. It is very important to have blessings in your life because with blessings you can move in the very right direction. It is matter of pleasure and pride for igniting power engineer platform that respected honorable Bhishma Pitamao power sector, power system. He is a person who don't need any kind of introduction from a very small person like me. He himself is a introduction itself. Sanjay Patki sahab accepted our invitation and he is with us and we are going to create a history. No doubt about it, it is bound to happen. I welcome again Patki sahab. Welcome sir. And I will be failing in my duty. Before I invite Patki sahab, I want to say a few things. I will be failing in my duties if I don't remember some good stalwarts who could make it possible. First of all, I would like to thank my parents almighty and Honorable P.P. Vaisa, Sahil sir, Rajput sir, respected Anjali ma'am, Sunny Nagpal ji, respected Apao sir, Dr. Vikas ji, Gopa ji, K.K. Murti sir, N.K. Mittal sir, P. Ramachandran sir, Dr. Rajamani, Sanjay Patki sir, he is already here, Mehta sir, Manas Kundu sir, Sanjay Agrawal ji, Saket Gupta ji, S.K. Patra ji, Sanjay Banerjee ji, Patnaik sir. And very special thank to ELP Alliance. Now, I am going to invite the real gem of the day without any wasting further time. I would like to request everyone unmute yourself for a minute and give that Bhishm Pitama a very warm welcome by giving round of applause. Perfect. Now I am going to invite Sanjay Patkisa. Please come on the stage and make this stage on fire with your knowledge. We all are very eagerly waiting for that day to happen. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Rajesh ji. All the participants today, very good evening to all of you. It's my great pleasure to be with all of you today. Rajesh ji invited me to speak on the subject uh, fundamentals of uh, power system protection. Uh, uh, briefly, a thought came to my mind. When you talk about fundamentals, there are many. Fundamentals are usually associated with the fact that they don't change. Technology can change, but fundamentals don't change. So, uh, we'll be possibly repeating many things which uh, people already know. But if you uh, really uh, think over it, the way the technology has changed in the protection system, I won't say relay, I am talking about protection system. Uh, we had to learn some new fundamentals. And I thought it's a good subject to talk about. But I want to before I start the presentation, I want to request to be excused because for some seniors, what I speak today will be very basic and fundamental. Uh, it's bound to happen because we have a mix of audience and the topic is such that uh, at the cost of repetition, we miss, should not forget some basic fundamentals 
uh, tenets of the power system. So with that introduction, uh, I think let us begin with the uh, my presentation. I will, though subject is uh, about uh, protection fundamentals, I will try to make it as much relevant as possible to the to today's uh, status of uh, application uh, considering the new technology. I will share my screen. Uh, party participants are free to write down their question in the chat box if they have. I will be noting down and at the end of the session at 6.20 sharp, I will take all the questions of your query and that will be answered by respected participants. Yeah, is now my slide visible to everybody? Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir, it is visible. It is yes, visible, sir. okay, yeah. So uh, let us just have an overview. Um, basically, the protection systems uh, are designed uh, to sense faults, various kinds of fault we experience. Um, the primary nature of the fault is uh, failure of the insulation, but there can be uh, short circuits, there can be mechanical failure, there can be some disturbances which uh, induced due to some external interference. There could be various kinds of stresses on the equipment and which can lead to failure. Some faults can take place due to operating error and some faults can take place due to malfunction of the equipment. And we need to cater to all the types of fault when we design the protection system. The job of the protection system will just uh, repeat, though I expect everybody uh, to know about it. Uh, it basically de detection of the uh, fault currents um, and uh, clear the fault at a very high speed. Uh, and uh, basically intention is that uh, damage caused will be minimum because uh, the amount of energy which gets released into the fault directly depends on the I square T. That means the value of the current, uh, square of that, and the time for clearing the fault. And the prevent fault from expanding into other areas of power system. That is the second objective. That means the fault should remain confined to its own location then we should be able to isolate the faulty section of the power system and ensuring that uh, minimum section of the power system uh, is uh, shut down. Control of active power, reactive power, voltage, frequency, as a effect of fault, all the normal parameters will get disturbed. So we need to ensure that they remain within the operating uh, ranges of respective parameters and um, consequential damage after the fault. Uh, again, we should ensure that uh, the consequential damage uh, is also less. For example, um, if the lightning arrestor shatters, it, it, it not only uh, the damage is the lightning arrestor, but the splinters may damage the bushing of the transformer. It may damage the uh, porcelain of the current transformer, which is in the vicinity. So this consequential damage, which can occur due to one fault, or it can cause even a uh, trigger of uh, uh, fire. So uh, when we talk about protection system, all these aspects uh, need to be looked into uh, and mitigation should be uh, built into the design itself uh, when the system is designed. Three basic tenets of the uh, power system protection we always universally accept. Speed, because uh, higher speed means minimum uh, disturbance and minimum damage. 
selectivity we talked about limiting the isolation only to the area which is affected by the fault and the sensitivity speed selectivity and sensitivity these are the sensitivity means faults can be various types they can be high impedance fault there can be low impedance fault in some could be incipient fault um and we need to um, strike a compromise in terms of uh, sensitivity many times because too sensitive a protection may result into unnecessary operation sometimes uh, so it affects the reliability so uh, speed selectivity and sensitivity these are the parameters which um, a protection engineer need to um, sort of uh, uh, make a judicious choice uh, and that's why the protection engineering is considered as a art as well as science very famously mr mason james mason uh, who wrote the book which everybody refers he has stated that protection is not just a science it's an art and as the numerical protection system and technology has spread so much and the number of uh, features and functions in relay are increasing i think the proportion of the art in engineering uh, is increasing compared to the science for the same relay same power system parameter two engineers can engineer the um, scheme differently to achieve different speed different selectivity and different sensitivity that is where the art part of the uh, protection scheme um, is basically a, a challenge uh it, for improving the reliability the tools which are in the hands of uh, engineer who plans and engineers the scheme is basically um building reliability by duplication redundancy um, various diagnostic functions and the security features to avoid uh, mal operations so uh, these are the basic aspects and fundamental aspects based on which any scheme uh, is uh, designed but now every scheme will need not be highly complex and uh, 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 costly depending on the uh, size of the uh, plant or capacity of the equipment depending on the criticality the voltage level uh, in network um optimization has to be done and that is how the cost aspect also comes in so while you ensure the speed selectivity and sensitivity um reliability and the cost these are the two parameters which has to be kept eye on technology itself you can see what required multiple panels in few decades now we have come to a level where a simple ied uh, can is uh, packed with so much of power so a lot of uh, uh, functions can be taken care of in a decentralized manner today's numerical protection relay not only does the uh, protection relay function but lot of logic is bu built into the relay all interlocking schemes uh, control schemes uh, actual manual control from the panel uh, is also uh, possible to be carried out uh, from the relay so when we talk about today fundamental of protection is always a protection automation and control pac uh, this is become now one integrated uh, area uh, for engineers one of the most powerful tool which has been built into relay is the disturbance record and this disturbance record uh, again has become over the years a very powerful tool for carrying out uh, post stripping analysis and you can not only um, get the sequence of event you also get analog quantities uh, 
measure which are measured as well as you get the waveforms of current and voltages so uh, complete visualization of the power system behavior as well as the uh, fault currents voltages etc uh, can be uh, visualized by analyzing another important function is uh, in order to deal with various contingencies of the network and uh, power system complexities many times multiple uh, setting changes are required uh, depending on the power system condition good old days when there were electromechanical and static relays there used to be simple uh, plug type of uh, plug and switches uh, by which uh, uh, even uh, operator on duty uh, could do the uh, setting changes today with the numerical technology this is uh, uh, require it requires a special training uh, and everyone is, will not be able to access the parameters and uh, carry out the relay setting and uh, so there is a provision of multiple uh, setting groups which are pre stored uh, in the relay um, all the possible contingencies which may occur during the course of operation uh the required settings can be kept stored and the um, changeover of settings can be either done automatically or by a manual uh, selection action through scada systems so all these possibilities uh, today exist and have to be kept in mind um, when you do the uh, basic uh, conceptual uh, planning when we talk about entire protection system there are uh, two basically uh, classifications of protection earlier protection means protection would mean only the fault clearers so you used to have relays which will clear the fault but today there are two classes one is the fault clearance protection scheme and second is called um, uh, system protection schemes or special protection scheme which are nowadays uh, also uh, called wide area protections uh, which are basically um, ensuring that the disturbance doesn't spread to other areas and uh, minimum power system uh, gets affected because of any one disturbance within the fault clearance system there are again a main protection system there is a, a backup protection system so you have in the uh, main protection you have main protection itself as we go along we'll see uh, we are going for duplication etc earlier it was main one main two uh, with a different principle now we uh, go for duplicate protection system uh, there is a backup protection system earlier backup protection used to be uh, a totally different entity physically nowadays it's possible to again integrate backup within the main protection because of the duplication and um, ultimate uh, objective uh, of uh, uh, protection reduction in equipment damage prevention of uh, instability uh, prevention of abnormal voltages frequency overload uh, prevention of abnormal volt uh, uh, any other condition uh, becomes part of the protection scheme in india today we are not really looking at uh, uh, fault clearance system by the same people who design special protection schemes because of the way the our uh, system protection uh, is structured uh, the sps schemes come in the different category and the fault clearance protection system come in another category so different set of people uh, who plan these schemes but there is a um, technology wise lot of um, interchange possible and uh, uh, conceptual um, planning uh, also uh, there are common areas where uh, each stream can complement each other so this is a new uh, i would say uh, concepts where um, the system protection and the fault clearance protection system and 
they need to converge. Quickly, we'll go to the some basic um, fundamentals of the protection. You are all familiar with the concepts of unit protection and non-unit protection. Uh, unit protection basically uh, is confined, the area to be protected is confined by the location of the current transformers or sensors where uh, um, fault is need to be detected. So unit protection is typically a differential protection type of scheme um, where uh, depending on the placement of the city and the uh, zone of protection uh, gets confined and non-unit protection uh, basically is open-ended protection uh, just like overcurrent protection, distance protection, these are all uh, non-unit protection. The conceptually, again, whether the unit protection is a desirable uh, protection or non-unit protection is the more desirable depends on the type of network we are talking about and uh, type of uh, reliability and uh, re redundancy uh, you want to build in. If you go for unit uh, protection, uh, it doesn't cater to say the backup or uncleared fault within the, uh, the system or the uh, neighborhood system. Whereas, so you have to then consider um, a separate backup system when you consider unit protection. So we'll uh, see some of these details as we go along. When you have multiple protection system, the coordination between relays is an important aspect. Uh, we'll deal with uh, this coordination aspect. Uh, basically, what it uh, ensures is uh, in the interconnected network, when the fault takes place, the fault currents uh, and the voltage dip are seen and sensed by all the branches of the network. And uh, all the uh, relays who sense the fault current if they trip randomly will what we get is a uncoordinated operation and which will result in a larger area of power system to get affected so it's very important to achieve this coordination so this is another fundamental uh, aspect of the protection system that all the protections uh, which are located at various uh, location need to be coordinated properly. Uh, the fundamental aspect in this is that um, protection should be sensed at least at two different devices which are capable of de detecting the fault anywhere in the power system. So at any one place, for example, you are not able to isolate a fault. The fault should get isolated with the action of some other protection uh, system. When I say protection system, it's only not only relays, but including circuit breaker. Example is, is a remote backup prote protection or um, local breaker backup protection. So any if anyone doesn't act, some other uh, location, the fault should get sense. So this is the fundamental that at least two different locations the fault should get sense and it should be capable of isolation. So this is the basically uh, concept of protection zone which we are talking about. Again the fundamental in this uh, zone concept is there is an overlap. Why there is an overlap? Because we want to make sure that there is no blind zone or there is no borderline case where the fault can be here or there or not detected at all. So um, the overlap ensures that um, protection system um, will act in a certain manner. In case there could be certain choices made where um, situation will arise and blind zones might take place depending on whether those blind zones, uh, how important they are 
in terms of the network criticality because as just now as we said if the fault doesn't get clear in that local area some remote area remote location fault should will get cleared so wider disturbance will take place so depending on the criticality and then again the engineer has to make a choice whether we should ensure complete overlap or we can have some sort of you can say um, uh, border where you can tolerate fault clearance with some delay and scheme can be then engineered uh, that way so the city arrangement becomes very important where you locate the city just to make uh, the basic principle clear take for example uh, this arrangement here the city is this is a bus bar there is a circuit breaker and there is a city after that now this is the most commonly adopted location uh, on the line now you you see what are the we talked about blind zone or gray area what will happen if the fault is between circuit breaker and city for example if the fault is here this protection which is a bus fault protection will sense this fault and open this circuit breaker but will the fault will get, get cleared no because this fault is hanging on with a feed from the remote end now the scheme will have to then ensure that this fault gets cleared from remote end by either a transfer trip signal or any other means uh, which you can uh, use take now another case normally this case happens in a indoor switch gear sort of thing where cities are put on the bus side now in this situation what happens if if the fault is between city and uh, breaker the fault will get cleared by the line protection or feeder protection in this case it is out of the bus fault zone this circuit breaker will trip but again the fault will keep hanging from the bus so these are some of the examples of the uh, what we say uh, blind areas now whether to live with this blind area or or gray area where the fault may not get cleared or isolated or spend on two circuits two cities on either side of the circuit breaker ensuring that there is a complete overlap so that a fault here will get Uh, seen by both the schemes so this is the safest scheme but it requires additional investment in terms of additional city uh, here actually though there are two cities these are actually two cores of the same city but here you will you will require physically two different cities to be placed on either side of the breaker so this is just to explain the concept of city arrangement and its criticality in terms of uh, uh, fault clearance same situation arises when you make a scheme for say one and a half breaker scheme at 400 kv level in india most of the bus bar arrangements are one and a half breaker now there are various type of city arrangements uh, possible there are uh, complete um, full proof scheme possible where there are no blind zone but we require eight current transformers for a, a one uh, set up uh, bay if you got six cities you compromise on the number of cities you make six cities there are still two blind zones more, more popular is just a four city arrangement with a two blind zone so again this is a engineering choice so when you engineer the scheme depending on the criticality and your dependence on the additional scheme in terms of detection of the blind zone and clearance the fault for the blind zone and when you do this analysis you have to always keep in mind what is the risk what are the chances of this happening how frequently this such a thing can happen 
what is the probability of uh, this thing happening, how frequent it can happen, and what is the implication. If it happens in a once in a blue moon, what will be the uh, course of fault clearance and whether it can be tolerated. Depending on that, one optimizes. So this is a, another uh, example of uh, protection scheme engineering, where the choice of city and location uh, plays an important role. Second aspect, which is again fundamental, is when you are dealing with the uh, electromagnetic current asomer, the, there is a problem of city saturation. Because there is a mag uh, magnetic material in the current transformer, and uh, uh, when fault takes place, the current which flows uh, is uh, uh, 20 times, 10 times the normal rated current. The magnetic core, depending on its uh, properties, will have some level of saturation, and that is indicated by the what you all know, knee point voltage. So this is the excitation characteristics of the uh, current transformer magnetic core. You define excitation transformer with a logic that for a 10% rise in voltage, there is a 50% increase in the um, current. So, uh, what should be the normal operating point? If you operate too close to the knee to optimize the design, the chances of city going into saturation would increase. If you operate at a lower frequency, the size of the city will increase, the cost will increase. So uh, accordingly, the dimensioning factor of the city to be employed uh, will have to be selected and uh, equipment also becomes costly. So this is basically the city representation as an electromagnetic circuit. There is a, you can say, ideal transformer, which is a ratio of the city. There is a magnetizing limb of the uh, city, which is shown with a inductor, nonlinear inductor and a reg uh, register. And then there is a load uh, connected to this. This knee point voltage specification becomes one of the fundamental requirement of the protection system. Because what will happen is if the city gets saturated, that means this magnetization branch of the city, the primary current will not be reproduced completely to the load which is our relay here. The magnetization will take away the current and introduce error. And measurement of the uh, current by the relay will become erroneous. So this D point and the saturation uh, is another fundamental aspect of the protection which needs to be ensured. As the technology of the relays has improved, there are now me measurement as well as the waveform analysis algorithms which are so powerful that they can uh, complete the measurement before the city saturates. And also there are algorithms which can detect city saturation and appropriately uh, take the corrective action. Now, this is the typical current waveform which is shown here. This is a normal fault current with a offset. And if the city saturates, then you can see in red, at this point, city has saturated, the current has fallen to almost zero here because all the current is going in magnetization. So what you get is shown here in a red uh, waveform. Now, what it also means is you have this much time from here to here before the city saturates. So if you are able to take that measurement decision within this time, possibly the requirement of knee point voltage and very um, stringent uh, dimensioning factor for the real, uh, current transformer, etc., uh, 
need not be required. So this is again, you can say the fundamental change in uh, concept which is taking place in uh, how depending on the handling capacity of the saturation of the by the relay. And of course, the latest development which is there is optical city where there is no question of saturation altogether. So this will completely change the paradigm of um, protection where you don't have to deal with the saturation problem at all. So when we start using optical cities, and of course we'll then talk about the technology of uh, sample values, etc. There the fundamental of protections are completely changing. So the old thinking that uh, basic fundamentals relay may change, protection uh, technology may change, but the fundamentals don't change. Actually now fundamental itself is getting um, uh, new thinking. Now when you come to backup protection, again there are different types of backup protection. We earlier had a classification where we saw the uh, primary protection, backup protection, uh, and then the primary protection uh, for fault clearance we saw, and then we saw special protection scheme for the system protection. Now within the backup protection itself, we have um, local backup protection, you have uh, remote backup protection. So what is the local backup protection? For example, if you have got a distance relay, you have overcurrent relay which is gives a local backup that means if the primary protection fails to operate for some reason the local backup protection will let us not confuse this local backup backup protection with uh, local backup what you are talking about a backup protection which is located locally uh, earlier concept was uh, Normally, it will be physically different device. Nowadays, we accept backup protection built into the primary protection itself because both are getting duplicated in the new numeric relay. So again, the fundamental concepts here are a little bit changing because of the uh, technology. Uh, in terms of technology, because all possible um, fault uh, clearances Today, uh, relays are sensitive and they can uh, cater to those faults. Uh, so these multifunction relays have really made this possible where the uh, main backup protection, everything can be completely duplicated. Earlier concept we are used to was the local backup protection used to be physically different entity. People who are trained say 10 or 15 years back, we even used to say that um, if you are going for a static relay or micro based relay, backup protection should be still electromechanical relay. So that was the thinking at that time. But today, um, again, the, this basic thinking has changed. Now, for some, for some reason, if the breaker doesn't trip because of the uh, failure of uh, trip coil or DC circuits or any other mean, then you need to have breaker failure protection. That is also part of the uh, backup protection that is called LVBU also, local breaker failure protection. So you have got a uh, local backup, there is a local breaker failure relay and there is a possibility of uh, sequential splitting relay. That means, uh, a bus coupler or any other adjacent circuit which can also act as an isolating uh, section uh, can also act as a backup. So typically bus coupler, uh, opening a bus coupler will also uh, isolate the fault. If this doesn't work, then you go for remote backup. Remote backup basically is a physically different location of a substation where the fault is, where the network is interconnected and the fault current will be seen by that relay also. So this is a, uh, this we will call remote backup. What is the typical example of this? For example, if you don't have bus fault protection in some session, as per the mandate, now 220 kV and above bus fault protection is mandated. At 130 kV level, at generating station, bus fault protection is mandated. But at some station, if there is a bus fault protection is not there, 
then but if the bus fault takes place the fault will be clear by zone 2 of the remote end this zone 2 of the remote end is basically it is remote backup so uh, this is again the classification of the uh, backup protection now there is a again when we talk about uh, uh, backup protection it should be ideally completely independent um in terms of uh, ct input dc input etc this was one of the fundamental um, rule which every protection engineer was following i am saying was following because i just now like i said um, if uh, with the numerical relays and complete duplication of the multi function uh, protection id the backup is also part of the uh, main one for example if you have a line protection which is a uh, line differential relay backup is your distance relay and you have got a over current relay all built into uh, one relay but the, here the uh, one common factor is ct input is the same so uh, this has been taken care of by ha having a complete duplicate scheme as we have mentioned so to that extent i think this fundamental rule uh, is getting uh, uh, change now thinking is uh, uh, getting change Uh, for main one, main two uh, concept. Uh, also, uh, there is a earlier thinking was uh, that main one, main two, they should not only be independent, uh, independent in terms of the CT input, PT input, DC auxiliary supply. but the principle of operation itself should be different that was the thinking why why that was so that is because uh, you know the there no protection scheme was uh, a, a complete uh, scheme because faults are a various types as we said uh, it can be high impedance fault it can be low impedance fault there could be various complexities of measurement because of which uh, sensitivity will get affected so due to various complexities in terms of measurement there was a possibility that some relay may not be able to measure correctly or may not operate altogether in that case the main two is expected to be totally different in terms of operating principle and measurement principle so that even if main one doesn't add at least main two will act typical example i would give is if you have got a main one main two distance relay good old days we used to have main one which is a non switch scheme if you some people must have heard of non switch scheme and main two could be switch scheme what is the difference between the two because in one case the me measurement of all possible fault loops phase r phase to ground y phase to ground b phase to ground r to r r to b all those combinations of fault loops measurement was simultaneously taking place uh, whereas in the switch scheme the fault gate detected first and then the current and voltages are appropriately switched to carry out the measurement so uh, these are the two different uh, sort of uh, approaches uh, for measurement the base example would be distance relay and differential relay for the line protection the basic principle itself is different but both have its own limitation distance protection inherently has a uh, you can see the backup protection which is your zone 3 protection which caters to uncleared fault in the next line whereas a uh, uh, line differential protection cannot give such a backup protection 
there you rely on that overcurrent production. So that's how the scheme used to be made. But nowadays, with the multifunction numerical relay carrying out the multiple functions simultaneously with the available processing power, it's possible to completely duplicate and main one, main two can be uh, totally identical uh, with all the possible uh, functionalities. Now, then what is the risk in this case? Some people do think that uh, all these numerical relays, they are all based on certain measurements and there's a software, there's an algorithm. These algorithms are sort of, they are transparent to the users. Users will not know uh, what are the uh, uh, st strong points of the algorithm, what are the weaknesses, in which type of fault, which algorithm will be better. So uh, to be on safe side, one philosophy was a main one and main two, they should be from two different manufacturers. So initially when the numerical relays were when being applied, we are always used to have main one, main two from two different manufacturers so that if there are any software issues or the algorithm issues, uh, they should not result into a common failure. So the fundamental rule in protection system today or always is that there should not be any common mode failure. Now common mode failure, um, again you can on overall uh, protection scheme um, gets uh, applied to many other uh, common areas of uh, any component. For example, you may have a common disease, you may duplicate the protection, but disease supply can, can be common. You may have everything duplicated, but the trip coil will be only one. So there, uh, the modern concept where we are um, completely applying the uh, redundancy to every component so that there is no common mode failure. The complete redundancy and duplication uh, is to be ensured. And this also applies to the uh, future protection fundamental concept of uh, digital protection scheme, where we have uh, the new digital uh, optical cities which take sample value as an input. We basically hold this fundamental protection principle that uh, redundancy should ensure that there is no common mode failure anywhere. So this is a very fundamental shift in the thinking uh, in terms of design of the protection scheme uh, as we uh, are uh, going ahead with the new technology. So if you see the picture today, the of a scheme, today you will find even for the large generators, only two IDs or two relays with all these functionalities built into one relay. And there is a, you can see there is a, a complete city arrangement, etc., uh, showing different schemes. D there are different differential schemes. There is a generator differential, there is an overall differential, there is a transformer differential, uh, auxiliary transformer differential. Everything is getting into one box. So relays have become so powerful that they can now cater to the all uh, protection scheme. Uh, and you can then simply duplicate uh, everything, almost everything, including city, uh, including the cabling, uh, DC supplies, everything. Next is the output device. Now, uh, very often the question asked, First, the fundamental rule is we need lockout type device. Why do we need lockout type device, which are either hand reset or electrical reset or self reset? When do you go for self reset trip? When do you go for hand reset or remote electrical reset? And whether do you, you really, in today's modern numerical relay, need a heavy duty lockout release? This is again a fundamental change in the concept uh, taking place. Uh, heavy duty lockout relay is becoming now outdated. It's an old concept. 
basically it was doing the job of contact multiplication so that uh, contact could be used in multiple um, circuits second thing is uh, in terms of um, uh, ensuring that after the fault takes place the relay has to be consciously reset after certain procedures have been carried out by operation and maintenance staff that is the purpose of lockout so that there has to be authorized resetting of the relay before the circuit is clear for re-energization that is a function of lockout so that uh, unless it is resetted you cannot charge the equipment again this can be now achieved by simple uh, seal in features um, in the numerical relays also the out relay is robust enough now to be wired to the external circuits and in case of um, uh, numerical um, digital schemes where you use ic6150 protocol etc the contacts can be multiplied in a digital way for usage in by a goose message so this is again a completely fundamental change in uh, protection scheme engineering where uh, the concept of uh, lockout self reset or hand reset all these concepts are it's possible to be built in a digital manner one judicious decision which still requires to be taken is in terms of electromagnetic compatibility initial experience with the numerical relay we had experienced lot of failures of power supplies and output contact output contact of the relay uh, would get damaged because of the electromagnetic induction or the spurious signal or some voltage spikes etc so how do you decide uh, whether the numerical relay which is such an expensive device and uh, so many functions are dependent on that uh, the output contact doesn't fail so one safe strategy is to still use a Uh, multiplying relay which gives of isolation in terms of electromagnetic compatibility uh, the, the, these relays can be robust but at the same time the, you are adding one more component which can fail so it needs a supervision so you, so uh, you add a tripping relay i, I won't call it lockout relay because lockout function can be uh, implemented through uh, digital logic but this is just a tripping relay which does a function of galvanic isolation as well as uh, ensuring electromagnetic compatibility if you are having a completely digital substation which is engineered for a proper electromagnetic compatibility you don't need any physical or galvanic isolation contact multiplying relay so this is again something which is uh, open to um, decision technically one most important factor is the l by r ratio of the output circuit which is in terms of cabling etc so if the l by r uh, is not within the capability of the uh, breaking and making capacity of the contact today numerical relay output contact which are Um, compatible with IC six one eight five zero, they all have a very robust uh, withstand capacity of inductive breaking as well as the making uh, currents. Uh, so, but this is still, I would say, one of the fundamental uh, uh, thing to be uh, chosen. So we talked about tripping relay. next is a fundamental concept on stability there are three types of stability issues in protection um uh, angular stability frequency stability and voltage stability the angular stability 
again there are two types there are tra transient stability or small signal stability small signal stability example is uh, very low frequency oscillations which you observe in the power system uh, transient instability is typically when you uh, the system experiences short circuit uh, the uh, rotor angle uh, there is a rapid acceleration and then there is a deceleration so this is actually transient stability whether uh, system is able to recover from the fault or it becomes unstable frequency instability it's basically because of the mismatch between load and generation which typically happens uh, after a fault and it also happens during the um, the power swings uh, which uh, take place subsequent to fault clearance the voltage instability is basically again in two categories one is a uh, uh, large disturbance voltage instability and in the small disturbance voltage stability in the small disturbance voltage instability again it's a low frequency oscillations in mvr you will see reactive power oscillations and causing the uh, voltages uh, to oscillate and it can be for a long term and sh short term again could be uh, due to your uh, uh, voltage collapse phenomena which is due to basically your pv instability curve very briefly this is a equation which you should remember as a fundamental this is a power transfer equation the power transfer equation basically is a sending end voltage receiving end voltage divided by the uh, impedance between the two uh, bus bar and the angle separation sign that is the sign delta the angle between the ea and eb this is the power flow diagram this um, x governs the um, power flow uh, ability uh, to, to transmit the power in a stable manner now this x is the basically parameter which keeps changing during disturbance when the power transmission system uh, experiences fault this x will change the angle angular separation will change and as the cascading tripping uh, happens this x when we say the the network has become weak the network has become weak basically that means the between the two sources the impedance has increased so the ability to transmit power between the two networks keeps coming down so that is basically the basic fundamental of the um, in a angular instability and the power swing phenomena which we are all familiar is basically is a result of this stability so this is something which is very fundamental which we should know uh, in the protection system and the, all the distance relay and uh, many other protections which go like a pole slip protection they all are designed to cater to this sort of uh, uh, power swings which can be stable swings or they can be unstable swings voltage instability again very fundamental for protection engineer to know this is a famous pv curve power versus voltage curve as you know and this has something to do with the behavior of the load now most of the load is a motive load it's a reactive load so it's a mix of motive load and uh, lighting load which is a resistive load what happens is depending on the reactance of the line as the power flow increases line when we say lines get loaded overloaded it get loaded beyond its uh, capacity the voltage drop will increase so the de delta between sending end voltage and receiving end voltage not only the angular separation increases the magnitude of the voltage will also increase so the, this is you can say the power flow on the horizontal axis and vertical axis there's a voltage drop voltage will will stop dropping as the voltage stop dropping the what will the reaction of the load 
the motive load will start, start drawing more reactive power. When you start drawing more reactive power, more voltage drop will take place on the line. So what will happen? Again, the receiving end voltage will go down. So when the receiving voltage will go down, again more current will be drawn by the load, motive load, more reactive power flow will occur. And this is the sort of a phenomena which is a vicious circle and further leads to this sort of a nose point and voltage will start collapsing drastically. So this is called voltage instability. And this is the area where all the cascade tripping takes place of the network. This is the area where we all talk about load encroachment, you talk about power swing, um, uh, power swing blocking. So angular instability and voltage instability. So these are the two fundamental uh, principles which we should remember. They all cause power system disturbance. The third thing which is again fundamental to remember is the generator capability curve. When the generator is connected to the grid, when it is synchronized to the grid, its active power flow generation and reactive power generation has to be within the limits of capability curve. So this is actually your rated power MW. This is on vertical axis your um, MVAR reactive power. This area is termed as a reactive power which is exported to the grid in a over excited operation. That means here the excitation is being supplied so that uh, reactive power is pushed into the system. The voltage uh, will boost boost in this uh, mode and in the negative side when the voltage in the grid is higher you will your avr will start reducing the excitation it will go in under excited mode you will start absorbing the power and uh, there is a limit below which a machine can become out of state unstable now this is the capability curve within which generator has to play its role in stabilizing the grid. As the grid will have the voltage, over voltage problem, under voltage problem, etc. This capability curve acts as a first line of defense to maintain the stability of the grid. In over excited mode as well as in under excited mode. So this is another thing you can say uh, is very critical for the uh, operation perspective to maintain the voltages uh, in the grid. Alternative to this is you have to put a very heavy investment into the grid uh, for compensation. So you will go for static war compensators and a very expensive uh, solution uh, to control the voltages. Whereas uh, the first resource what is available to uh, us is uh, try to control it by um, excitation control try to uh, control it through uh, on-load tap changer of the transformer and try to control it by controlling the loads. The next fundamental point in production is the total time to clear the fault. Um, we all know that there is a a technical standard in India which tells us that all the faults at 400 kV level or 220 kV and above level has to be cleared within 100 milliseconds. At 132 kV level, it is 165 milliseconds. Um, why this need? This need arises out of the critical fault clearance time. What is the critical fault clearance time? It's a time beyond which if the fault remains uncleared, your angular stability will result into excursion of this stability limit and it will go into the generators will go in the unstable region. And this will result into large scale uh, power swings and uh, uh, disturbance. So, 
it becomes sort of mandatory to clear the fault within certain time so that power system remains stable what is new in this actually now this fault clearance time is referred to generators which are rotating machines and it has got a certain inertia so there is a depending on how many generators are online you have got a inertia constant of the system this inertia con constant of the system basically acts as a stabilizing force on the disturbance but nowadays um, with the generation um, becoming um, inverter based that means like solar generation wind generation all the generations they are connected to the grid through inverter the inertia of the power system which is traditionally uh, known is reducing so this is causing the problem of now or will cause problem in future uh, uh, into frequent uh, disturbances which are not possible to control in a conventional manner so this is the new fundamental um, paradigm uh, of the power system the second is you must have heard through requirement of fall right through the meaning of fall right through basically is the generation should not go off the bar when there is a prolonged voltage dip so you should ensure that uh, faults are cleared within certain time so these are all the some of the new i think um, thinking which has to go into our now uh, protection system design to ensure that uh, faults are cleared within the reasonable time so that uh, all the systems remain stable all the generation including the renewable generation remains connected to the grid so this is the uh, low voltage right through requirement which is uh, recent as of now it is applicable to only high voltage uh, level and medium voltage level this is yet to be uh, defined we talked about the second set of uh, protection scheme which are uh, special protection schemes uh, so there is a, a technical standard which we follow uh, which is issued by uh, cea the, the latest revision was after the 2012 uh, grid collapse 2013 new planning criteria and connectivity standards have taken place the special protection scheme was a new concept which is uh, slowly uh, becoming more and more complex there are new technologies of phasor measurement units which are coming in Uh, which will help us to design more complex uh, special protection schemes uh, phasor measurement is a new concept altogether it's again i would say new fundamental uh, as far as the protection scheme is concerned uh, fault current distance time is another very fundamental uh, to protection uh, various fault levels have been standardized and the distance times are standardized Uh, as a protection engineers we need to see that the slowest clearance of the fault takes place within this given time but which is generally one second so this is your boundary line of protection engineer all faults must be cleared uh, within uh, this time uh, which is within the uh, withstand cap at short time withstand capacity of all the equipments the fault current itself we have to remember has got um, dc offset uh, due to uh, transient sub transient transient and steady state uh, reactances of the generator and when we say this fault current so this fault current belongs to uh, this peak currents and but we have to also keep in mind there are certain time constants that means that the peak fault current will last for maybe few cycles so this is the when we say short circuit withstand time of a transformer we have to actually consider this peak current whereas 
this is the steady state you are 40 kilo amp or uh, water is the fault current this is steady state fault current which comes after some uh, time delay so if you go by say transformer specification they will say the short circuit distant capacity will be for 2 seconds so this is the current we are talking about whereas the dynamic distant would be here so the when we say winding mechanically should withstand the electromagnetic stress at that time you should take this peak current whereas the thermal withstand if you have to take you have to take this current so this is the uh, again a fundamental concept of short circuit uh, and this is the usually in the term as a decrement curve the fault decrement curve and when you uh, consider this is the sub transient period transient period and steady state uh, the protection scheme when you are designing uh, you have to keep in mind the what time delay we are talking about for example uh, during zone 2 or zone 3 depending on our time uh, and the uh, arcing current will accordingly get reduced as the time passes another fundamental aspect we'll quickly go through is a type of grounding we all know the grounding affects the protection system because it uh, limits the it decides the level of fault current uh, uh, not only that, it uh, limits the fault current depending on the uh, whether it's a solidly grounding system or reactive grounding system or uh, uh, resistance grounding system. It also uh, reduces uh, the transient over voltages. It also uh, decides. Uh, what are the sort of uh, uh, damages? For example, the core damage in the generator is a very severe damage, and generator uh, repair will get uh, delayed uh, for several months if the uh, core gets damaged. So, in generator, it is important that um, the fault current should be reduced to very low value. So you go for impedance grounded for the uh, generator. So likewise, uh, the grounding choice uh, affects uh, the damage and the protection system uh, needs to be designed to cater to type of grounding. So solidly grounding system, this is the impedance grounding, is a high impedance ground. There is a transformer and resistors. So this is the high impedance ground for the generator. There is another phenomena which you have to uh, remember is uh, the rise in potential uh, when you go for resistance grounding system. If you go for a resistance ground or high impedance ground, where this, uh, there is a reactor used to limit the fault current, correspondingly there is a rise in healthy phase voltage. Suppose there is a fault here, these phases will see with respect to ground uh, voltage which can be root three times the uh, normal voltage with respect to ground. So these are all transient over voltage phenomena. These are all basically defined by the uh, co if, uh, coefficient of earthing. This coefficient of earthing uh, basically uh, is a ratio of um, single phase to three phase um, uh, fall current depending on the impedance which you put in the neutral and if it is more than 0.6 single phase current to uh, three phase current uh, it is called an effectively our system uh, another fundamental requirement of protection is the control voltage uh, dc supply that is 220 volt battery uh, to increase the reliability, we go for a twin battery system with a duplication of trip coils, uh, DC1, DC2. There are again dif different configurations uh, are possible depending on the criticality of the station. But this is another fundamental thing which we should remember. 
uh, when you are uh, having a complete redundant scheme, you should have completely duplicated without any DC mix-up between main one and main two DC. That means two independent batteries should be supplying DC power to two independent system with no common thing in between the two systems. Many people, depending on the risk perception, they also go for duplication of the DC distribution, but the DC system is paid by one battery and charger at a time. The other battery remains uh, in standby mode. So th these are the concept based on the risk, uh, which uh, is uh, utility uh, can they take their own uh, call. Uh, duplication of the trip coil. Ideally, in the modern um, scheme, as we said, we need to maintain complete independent main one, main two, right up to the trip coils. In the transition period, we also have a philosophy of cross tripping. By cross tripping, what we mean is uh, main one protection execute trip on DC trip coil one as well as trip coil two. Main two also does on trip coil one as well as trip coil two. This is called cross tripping. Most uh, utilities still prefer in India this cross tripping philosophy. It does cause some uh, sort of a risk in terms of two DCs coming into one. Uh, circuit uh, location. Uh, again, it's a question of uh, to what extent you want to de-risk. Then we come to very. Uh, we are running short of time, so what uh, we can just touch upon certain fundamental aspects uh, of coordination. Uh, basic coordination, you all know, uh, is basically either done by a time coordination, it can be done by current coordination or it can be a combination of the two. We have for coordination for different type of IDMT characteristics, which are inverse a type of characteristic. It can be standard inverse, it can be very inverse or extremely inverse. Basically, it allows you to choose for a given variation of the fault current or the, the correct uh, optimal time to clear the fault. So it's a um, choice to be made by the relay setting engineer so that uh, tripping time can be uh, optimized and it all depends on the what sort of fall current we are looking at. What is the minimum fall current? What is the maximum fall current? Uh, so that uh, for the, any combination of the fault, uh, you get an optimal time for clearing the fault. New addition to this is a numerical relays where we got a de definite time um, coordination along with an inverse time coordination. This is an example where you can say uh, multiple high set element of which are available in the numerical relay by providing a definite time delay for a various levels of fault current. Instead of waiting for the inverse characteristic, you can clear the fault early by definite time. And you can uh, see the saving in fault clearance time. This last column is how much time delay can be saved um, by having a combination of definite time coordination uh, in combination with the inverse time coordination. Uh, next fundamental rule is regarding the need for directional detection. Directional detection is not only required for overcurrent relays, it is also required for uh, distance protection. Basically, the illustration given here, you can see if there are fault here or fault here, there are multiple relays um, which will see the same fault current. For example, if the fault is here, these two which are shown in red, they should clear the fault. These relays should not act before that. Whereas if the fault is here, this fellow can also trip and this fellow also can trip. So in the, these two cases, you can avoid unnecessary operation by directionalize the, this relay as well as this relay. So that this relay will react when the power flow is in this direction. Whereas this relay will react when power flow is in forward direction. 
So there is a need for directional. How do you do directional detection? By polarizing the relay with a voltage. So the phase angle between the polarizing voltage and the fault current that decides whether the fault is in a forward direction or reverse direction. So this is the uh, fundamental. We will not go into detail, but this is uh, something which you have to remember. There is a choice of polarizing voltage. Which voltage to use for polarization is something again uh, depending on the different types of fault and what is the sensitivity uh, you require for directional detection. And next question then remains is if overcurrent relay can do all this uh, function, why do you use distance relay? This is again a very fundamental question in protection. Why use impedance relay when overcurrent relays are doing the job? The simple answer to that question is you take this situation when there is a overcurrent protection sensitivity as well as the time. Both are dependent on the quantum of current flow. This quantum of current flow gets decided by the source. The source can change. Source for fault current can change depending on how many generators are in service. So uh, if there are say uh, generating station with a four generator, there will be certain fault current. But uh, suppose there is only one generator in service, the fault current will be very less. These lacuna are dependence on the source, on the sensitivity as well as the time of operation is overcome by user distance relay. Because distance relay basically measures distance at a point of measurement by measuring voltage and current, not only current. So that is a fundamental. Basic lacuna here is the voltage which is needed at the point of measurement is dependent on the source to source to line ratio. This is called source impedance ratio SIR. So when a layman talks about uh, short line, medium length line or long line. He is talking about lines in length of the line in terms of kilometer. If the protection engineer is asked to define short line, medium line, he will talk about so what is the source impedance to line impedance ratio. So why this is important? Because depending on this ratio, the voltage at the point of measurement will be dependent on that ratio. So this is why this is uh, uh, necessary. This also important from the point of view of uh, polarization of the distance relay as well as over current relay. So uh, the, the distance relay uh, which we talked about, uh, again we and need proper measurement of voltage at the point where the CT and PT and relay is located and they all are dependent on the impedance. Now impedance of the source and impedance of the uh, line. Now you all, we all know that distance relays basically is a, a, un a non-unit protection. It has got zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. There are certain uh, philosophies which are fundamental to uh, uh, setting of the zones, which is the reach of the relay for zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. The fundamental rule here is if this is A and B, if this is the line to be protected, this line has to be protected 100%. But distance relays, as we saw, has the number of errors in terms of correct measurement. So there is a CTPT error, there are measurement error, there are other influences on the impedance measurement like infeed factors, mutual coupling, uh, ground composition, and uh, these are number of uh, sources of error. This basically uh, results in underreach or overreach of the zones. To avoid that problem, uh, zone one normally we keep 80%, zone 2 uh, 
has to cover the balance because otherwise uh, if the fault is in the last 20 percent it will remain unclear so it is covered by zone two and to be on safe side we covered 50 percent of the shortest line or 120 percent of the primary line whichever is higher so uh, this is the sort of uh, fundamental rules of distance protection and the third zone which is basically for this relay is a backup protection for unclear fault in the next line which is line bc so this is the fundamental of the impedance relay there are again the fundamental characteristics of the impedance relay which is the circular characteristic then there is an offset move characteristic and there is a quadrilateral characteristic each of this characteristic basically is trying to cover line by its reactance and resistance. So if you, what are the very fundamental differences? If you have the more characteristic, which is uh, more popular, you can see it's resistive. You, you choose your zone one by say this reactance. Automatically, your resistance reach is getting limited by the curvature of the circle. So resistance reach become limited. To overcome that, we rotate the circle in the direction of the line. So you cover, you give a tilt or angle to this Mohs circle. So what has happened with this? With this, you are able to now cover more resistance along with the reactors still better you can do by um, quadrilateral characteristics here you can choose independently x as well as r why all this important because basically the fault resistance comprises of fault impedance rather comprises of the uh, arc and the tower footing resistance so the, the arc resistance varies depending on uh, this formula, which is uh, Warrington famous formula. Everybody uses this to calculate the arc resistance. And there is a tower footing resistance. And add to that the fault impedance. Fault impedance also can vary. For example, if there is a fault with respect to a tree, then there will be a different sort of fault resistance. To accommodate this sort of a faults, we need better coverage in the resistance direction. So the fundamental here is while distance protection should have proper reach in terms of reactance, the resistance reach should be maximized as much as possible so that high impedance falls due to tower footing resistance and fault resistance, they can be covered properly and at the same time ensuring that it doesn't maloperate or overreach for uh, heavy load uh, or load encroachment type of condition. So this is the sort of uh, uh, safety which need to built in. Second thing is we talked about uh, instabilities. If the, these are the distance relay protection zones and we talked about power swing. So we need to ensure that these power swings do not result into unnecessary tripping of the lines due to distance protection. So for that purpose, we need to have power swing detection and appropriate strategy uh, for power swing uh, blocking as, a, as well as power swing tripping. This is something which you know, fundamentally uh, has been uh, reviewed after 2012 grid collapse when multiple lines have tripped uh, resulting into cascading uh, of the and resulting into grid shutdown uh, during 2012 uh, disturbance. And finally, I will just mention here that uh, while the protection fundamentals are uh, conceived without considering the communication, that means without aid of pro uh, communication, the protection schemes can be improved by various kinds of communication header protection schemes. The communication scheme itself on power line 
a PLCC to fiber optic today has become so reliable that you can almost now depend on um, communication aided protection scheme as a fundamental. Going forward, as the complexities of the protection will increase, I think dependence on the communication uh, will also increase because you get multiple terminal lines, tap lines, um, and many other uh, combinations uh, for which communication will be essential. Uh, very quickly, we'll conclude with the um, fundamentals of the differential protection. Uh, differential protection basically has two concepts. One is high impedance and low impedance differential. Both have the, their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, today's numerical relay gives you choice for low impedance or high impedance scheme. The main problem with the low uh, differential scheme is to maintain its stability. By stability, what we mean is differential protection should remain stable for a fault which is outside the protection zone. And this stability is achieved either by uh, setting of the, uh, you can say, stabilizing resistor in a high impedance scheme or by the uh, restraining feature, which is called percentage bias uh, restraining characteristic in a differential relay. This itself results into, uh, again, multiple uh, complications. Uh, transformer type changing, inrush current of the transformer, magnetization due to overexcitation, uh, different city uh, responses, all these can result into uh, malfunction. Again, there are ways to deal with this, but uh, when you deal with differential scheme, these are all become uh, essential to uh, tackle. We'll not get into little more details on this, but we must remember that these are the complications which need to handle. The numerical relays has got now various algorithms of de dealing with magnetizing inrush current. So, uh, differential protection today has become much more stable uh, as compared to uh, the previous uh, generation of differential. The lastly, I would just say fundamental change has occurred in the uh, bus fall schemes. Bus fall schemes again, there is a choice of high impedance and low impedance. Low impedance scheme further have migrated uh, in terms of uh, technology. Today's numerical bus bar scheme has gone from centralized scheme to decentralized scheme. Basically, it result in substantial saving in terms of uh, cabling. And at the same time, it has become much more stable. Uh, the use of digital communication uh, has further now improved the reliability of the differential uh, protection scheme and made it uh, simpler in terms of physical infrastructure which is required to execute a differential scheme. And ultimately, uh, need of breaker failure protection, as we had discussed earlier, uh, breaker failure protection along with the read trip feature has again become very fundamental. Uh, why it has become fundamental? Basically, need for faster clearance of the fault. As the power system has grown, uh, we need to ensure that all faults are clear uh, within certain uh, time. So, uh, the LBBU protection uh, is again uh, fundamental. So thank you very much. I tried to cover uh, broadly uh, all the basic fundamentals of various types of protection schemes. Uh, as you see in many places, the protection schemes uh, fundamental itself is changing because of the technology as well as the uh, applications. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for such enriching, mind-blowing session. I don't have exact word to say thank you. Thank you very much will be the very small word for such an enlightening session. And uh, because of uh, scarcity of time, I have to take many questions. And I will start with a very basic question that was asked by many people do in the 
chat box as well as in the email yes sir, yeah the very first question is sir we are using we are making star of city okay uh, there are two options to make star of our candy of the city one is you are in the switch yard second is in the control panel which one is better and why uh, the question is how to make star or your city uh, location no. of the location location what is the best location in the control panel or in the switch yard near to the switch near the switch uh, switch gear um generally it is recommended that um, the city uh, star formation as well as the grounding of the star point should be done on the first control panel where the city cable lands okay so now that but the, uh, most of the, the first panel could first panel could be uh, your relay and control panel in the relay room or it could be a marshalling box in the switch yard uh, so we where whichever is the first landing place uh, that okay. is the recommended location uh, basic idea is in terms of safety when the um, uh, fault current flows the uh, rise in ground potential uh, also uh, risk the uh, safety risk uh, to people who are working as well as uh, uh, on the uh, equipment which is protected that is uh, the casing uh, so general practice is that the second aspect is um, in terms of maintenance also to ensure that there are no multiple grounds in a, in a control panel uh, it becomes easier to isolate the earthing and carry out insulation resistance tests so these are the both aspect so general thermal room is first panel of landing which okay. could be that panel uh, very common question next question i am going to ask is what happens in hv substation let's say 132 by 11 kv substation we usually uh, move by the fault level given for 132 kv that is 31.31.5 31 kilo ampere and there are two types of cities are used one at the 132 kv side in the transformer and second is the 11 kv for the differential protection for 132 kv side with 31.5 kilo ampere of fault the new point voltage will be on the very high side whereas for the 11 kv system where the fault level is quite low the new point voltage becomes smaller is there any problem when two relays of different new point voltage are used in the same scheme as a differential protection again it um, depends on the uh, type of relay uh, if you go for low impedance scheme uh, in a modern numerical relay Uh, it might be possible to uh, use cities with a different magnetization characteristics but uh, if you are using the high impedance differential scheme it become necessary that both the cities in terms of mag magnetization characteristics they are matched otherwise due to difference in the magnetization behavior uh, there can be uh, malfunctioning of the, uh, the high impedance differential scheme okay thank you sir and in the last presentation by dr raja mani he used one thing i noticed that point in the area protection he recommended for use of four city or five city options but where to use five city options and where to use four city option for area protection of our transformer um i don't know which uh, uh, raja mani is which present Presentation you are talking about, but uh, very common is a four city option. That means yes, three yes, on face I, side, uh, four, yes. uh, three, three on face side, and one is a neutral. Uh, right. Uh, now, but, now uh, uh, but if if uh, yeah, some typical example is there, maybe we can forward uh, uh, that uh, email on email. We can reply uh, based on that. Okay. Now I have five participant name who have post sign. I would like. to invite one by one please ask your question because we would like to finish by 7 at most first of all i would like to invite kartian kian he has asked some question kindly unmute and ask your question hi sir i would like to ask this question please please ask the ask the question sir i am speaking with the main on main to production system redundancy Uh, I have studied in a paper that in nuclear power plants, 
where the two we have three types of protections main one main two main three where main one and main two are numerical and main three is electromechanical concept based why because the similar system can't be ins installed in the substation type why because i am saying that uh, in main one main two we have using a numerical where the ct cars can be prone to uh, easily damage where our if ct cars in the numerical relay gets damaged means uh, uh, the yard side ct failure might occur why the similar system can't be implemented in substation side? Uh, see, the choice of um, protection uh, and uh, redundancy, uh, it all depends on the criticality and the risk, as uh, that is the basic statement we made today. Um, in the nuclear power station, where the risk uh, perception is very high, um, you uh, in the normal substation, you go for one out of two, for example, logic. That means uh, there are two protection scheme. Anyone can cause the tripping. Yes, uh, yes, if you want uh, uh, more uh, reliability, you could go for two out of two logic. But in two out of two logic, there is also a risk. If one doesn't operate, nothing will operate. So the next choice in the control scheme is actually two out of three logic. But two out of three logic when you go, that is the most reliable. Uh, but uh, uh, you are saying uh, that main one, main two are static or numerical and uh, main three is electromechanical. Now this I don't think is the trend now. Electromechanical is totally now obsolete uh, and it cannot match uh, main one, main two functionalities. So uh, even if you want to go for uh, two out of three logic, uh, I think it is safe to go for all three numerical uh, multifunction relays. Thank you, sir. Does it answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Sir. Okay. Now I would like to invite Mona Lisa Biswal. Please ask your question if you are here. Mona Lisa. Uh, Namaskar, Hi. sir. Patki, sir. Yes. Huh, please unmute and say. Uh, sir, my question is that uh, in a modern day city, uh, city situation present or not? Uh, we are not getting your voice properly. Uh, sir, my network is poor. Sir, my question is that in the present scenario, the city situation condition still present or not? Or is, is the situation scheme? Are facing still with challenge uh, during the city situation condition or not? No, your uh, question, I got it that uh, you are asking about city saturation yes, condition, yes. Uh, but uh, yes, what is the question related to that? I'm, uh, your voice is getting interrupted. Uh, the so my question, question, I am going to ask you a question. The question is that is what is the relevancy of city saturation in the present era? Uh, actually, city saturation is one of the biggest issue as we deal with uh, uh, differential protections of various kinds, whether it's a line differential or it's a Tassama differential or bus bar protection, because if the any one city saturates, your protection can actually malfunction or it may not function at all. So both the possibilities are there. Um, to tackle this problem, uh, numerical relays do have now designs which do city saturation detection and blocking if the fault is outside the protected zone. Um, with this, actually, uh, city saturation has becoming now less of a problem compared to the old generation relay. But problem has to be recognized till we start using uh, optimal uh, optical current as well as city saturation is the problem uh, but we are dealing with it in much better way in numerical relays today compared to the older version great sir thank you very much uh, Tom, i would like to invite avinash if you are available please unmute and ask your question yes i'm here Actually, my question is, uh, uh, I'm talking about distribution uh, substations. 
uh, whenever there is a uh, fault in the clone's vicinity of a feeder, particularly the uh, outgoing feeder relay gives a trip command as well as the incomer relay also gives a trip command and both the feeders, I mean incomer and outgoing breakers are tripped simultaneously. What happens is that causes interruption. We have tried uh, changing the self, uh, as per the fault current level, we have tried to change the settings and uh, done many things, but uh, most of the times this uh, problem is unresolved. So, we, can you elaborate more on this? Very good question. Very good question. Yeah, I understood the uh, question. Uh, basically, uh, it's a coordination between the incomer and outgoing feeders. Uh, normally, it is dealt with by a suitable time delay. Uh, but if you uh, introduce a delay in the incomer, even for the fault in the switchgear also, it will get delayed. So, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation also, today we have... Um, numerical relays with a multiple uh, high set element uh, which can instantaneously or with a short time delay they can be coordinated with the outgoing so with a combination of um, idmp characteristic and definite time short time delay uh, you can overcome this sort of a coordination problem um, even better would be uh, to execute a scheme in future with a Goose communication between incomer and outgoing relay with IEC 61850 uh, based uh, uh, logic, which will, will completely eliminate this problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, because of scarcity of time, I want to complete by 7 1. I, the, I am going to call the last, last participant, Mr. Mehtaji. PB Mehtaji, if you are here, please come and ask your question. If you are not here, I would like to call Sujit Banerjee. I think he has also uh, left. Okay. Yes, sir. Good, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, uh, please, can please. You hear? Uh, yes, can you yes, hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Last question of the session. Please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, in uh, EHV systems, uh, we are in load dispatch center. We find that in EHV systems, uh, for uh, they are all uh, solidly grounded. But even for single line to ground faults, we are finding that uh, the healthy phase, healthy phase voltage is often experiencing voltage rise. So what may be the possible reason? Actually, arthing of the substation has also been tested and found to be okay. But uh, still, healthy phase voltage rise is being observed. Uh, healthy, healthy phase voltage rise uh, will uh, still occur because... Uh, uh, there will be some finite resistance when the uh, ground fault current occurs. Your earthing may be uh, good, uh, but the earth itself will offer a certain resistance and fault itself will offer some resistance. So, there will be a rise in earthing, but uh, uh, solidly earthing system will limit this rise to some extent. So, it cannot completely eliminate, but uh, there will be some uh, rise in uh, potential. Uh, how long that rise occurs and uh, it depends on the fault clearance time and uh, how much magnitude of uh, voltage rise will be there will also uh, depend on the uh, system uh, parameters uh, like the uh, earthing resistance as well as the type of soil which is uh, Hello, Rajesh Ji. Thank you, sir. Uh, please, I am not going to take any question. All other questions will be answered through mail. Please, please excuse me. Now, as a final word, SC Mehta Sabi is there. He is the main mentor. Please say validity speech, a few words about our group and this presentation. Mehta Sabi, please say one line. Kindly unmute and say a few words. If you are eligible. Doctor, you are talking to me. This is HC Mehta. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Good, good, good evening, Mr. Patki. Good evening, Mehta sir. <laughs> I, I, it's wonderful and a great effort by Rajesh Arora. I thought he keeps interest only in earthing grounding. <laughs> but then uh, he has changed the track to protection. And uh, with you as a mentor there, I'm really so happy 
that so many people have participated. He said plus 300. And uh, such a wonderful question answer session. Really delighted. Protection is a subject one is very close to my heart. I have spent my career. But at the same time, I remember during my early days when I attended one such course in Indian Institute of Science in the beginning, and the dean of IISC said that when you speak of a protection, it is a cream of a milk. And truly, the control and protection is a cream of a cream of a milk, and it is always, always an evolving. Just now, as you spoke, numericals are something which has gone beyond everything. And I believe that in next five years, something else also should be coming up. So all the participants enjoy your career and enjoy this subject. It's a wonderful, creamy subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your thank, enlightenment. Thank, thank, thank you, Mehta, sir. Oh, my thank pleasure. You, sir. My pleasure. Now, with all these words, I would like to say thank you, sir. Patki sir, thank you once again again for accepting our invitation you are here thank you once again i thanks all the participants who have come here from taking time of their busy schedule thank you once again to everyone patki sahab mehta sahab i need your blessings thank you very much thanks a lot Th thank you all i enjoy talking to all of you thank you Sir, one more request from all the participants. They, they are asking for the PPT.